Hi, and welcome back. I made a video about Reverb Shaper recently and managed to completely miss an important and unusual feature. It's particularly useful with longer impulses, like this one. I like the way this sounds on these electric piano chords, but we run into a problem when the chords start to change. The reverb is so long that each chord starts to blur into the next, and the harmonies get messed up. I have a new chord every two bars, so I'll set the timing to match for the reverb output modulation, then add a couple of nodes right at the end so that the reverb is ducked down to zero very briefly just before each new chord. How does that help? Well, now I'm going to switch on clear tails. This is the feature I referred to earlier. Now the reverb buffer gets reset whenever the output level is modulated down to zero, and my chords no longer play over one another. We can see the difference on the graphic display. With clear tails off, each little blob of chord continues relentlessly to the end of the impulse, and we end up with two or three playing at once. But with clear tails on, each blob disappears as soon as the next one arrives, or rather, whenever I dip the reverb down to zero with the modulation. Here's a slightly different example. Again, I've picked a really long impulse from the sustained category, but this time I've dipped the modulation briefly to zero at the start instead of the end, and I've set the modulation to trigger from incoming transients. And I'm going to play my strat through it. I've played around with the triggering settings a little to make this feel nicer to play. I'm using the general algorithm, and I've tweaked the threshold and detail parameters a bit. This does add a tiny bit of latency, but it still feels perfectly playable to me in real time, and it's a lot of fun. Just for reference, here's how messy and out of control it gets with clear tails off. And back on, that's much better. Okay, so that's the clear tails feature, but it doesn't feel like enough for one video, so I'm going to talk about some of the fun things you can do with reverbs when you have a fully loaded shaper box with all the other modules. Let's go back to that electric piano again, and let's think about some ways to add some more movement to the reverb tail. Perhaps most obviously, there's the liquid flanger or phaser module. I'm going to pick a complex curvy sweep preset, set the modulation length unsynced, and slow it right down. And let's have less of the feedback, so it's a bit more subtle and subliminal. OK, I'll turn that off again and show you a less obvious method. This time I'll load a time shaper, and let's use the half time option. Our reverb tail is now magically playing at half speed. If I create an upward gradient, that region will play faster than real time. I want something a bit more subtle, however, so let's unlink the buffer size and choose one of the millisecond options at the bottom. And now we get slight detuning instead of dramatic pitch changes. If I blend in some dry signal, the result is pleasingly rich and chorusing. Of course, there's nothing to stop you running this and the liquid module together if you want. OK, here's a pad sound sending to a reverb with some transcate-style modulation for the output level. You might think that having this option built into Reverb Shaper makes the volume shaper redundant. That's closer to being true if it's running as a send effect like this, as both will only affect the wet reverb signal. But it can still be fun to run different patterns with different timings, like this triplet pattern running at three quarters of a bar. Theoretically, I could have created this same effect with a single pattern in either Reverb Shaper or Volume Shaper, but in practice that simply wouldn't have happened. Combining simple patterns can be a much more intuitive and fun way to create more complex patterns. <laughs> 
speaking of making things more complex, injecting some noise into the reverb can make it sound much thicker and richer. And let's also have a sweeping high pass filter after the reverb. Time for some drums, I think. Here's a snare drum. Or is it? This is a sample of my son's not quite a toy drum kit. And the snare drum doesn't actually have any snare wires, rather some kind of internal mechanism, perhaps similar to a cajon. Anyway, this shaper box is running on the snare channel as an insert. Let's add a reverb. And before we worry about choosing an impulse, I'm going to also add a crush module. If I reduce the bit depth down to around six bits or so, notice how the reverb tail gets crunchy and distorted as it decays, and then stops dead when it drops below the least significant bit, as if hard gated. I would like a much subtler and more subliminal version of that, which I can achieve by switching to a much shorter reverb impulse. And that crunchiness now happens very briefly after each drum hit. If I switch back to the crush module, I can also reduce the sample rate. Remember, this is an insert effect, so this affects the dry signal as well as the reverb. And I'm not going to reduce it too far. Somewhere around the 22k mark is nice, with perhaps a little jitter to add some randomness to the artifacts. If I bypass the crush module, Notice how clean and hi-fi that seems. And how much darker and grittier it gets with it back in. I haven't finished with the snare drum though. I'm also going to set up a send to another reverb shaper with an interestingly textured and moderately long reverb impulse. And I'm going to add a time shaper. Let's have this sawtooth preset from the reverse category. And as if by magic, we now have a reverse reverb on the snare. Next, I'm going to switch the modulation time base to two bars. If it seems weird that nothing changes, that's because it's a simple snare part and the buffer size is linked to the modulation rate. Anyway, I can now switch to the line tool and set the first bar to just normal real-time playback. So now we get a forwards reverb tail, alternating with a backwards reverb tail, which is quite a cool effect in my opinion. If there are little bits of reverb tail appearing elsewhere in the pattern, you can clean those up by matching the gradient of the shaded area. This will stop the playback head for those sections and give you silence. Let's stick with Time Shaper for the last example, which is actually going to be that guitar part from earlier again. I'm a big fan of using Time Shaper on my guitar parts. It can make the most boring and pedestrian of blues scale solos into something ear catching and surprising with minimal effort. But it's especially fun in this case. Here's a preset pattern, no tweaks. That makes me very happy. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>